We, uh, we focus a lot on the challenges that we're facing right now in this part of the world, in this part of Europe. And I've just come from Belgium and then Poland and Moldova. And there's some very, very big principles at stake as a result of Russia's aggression on Ukraine, a war of choice, unprovoked, premeditated. And we talk a lot about them. It's important to talk about them because um, it's important that people understand what's actually at stake. And it goes beyond even Ukraine, beyond even the Baltic countries, beyond even Europe. Basic principles of the international order that came into being after two world wars as a means of trying to keep peace and security after the world had been torn apart, not once, but twice. Principles like it's not okay for one country to invade another, to change its borders by force. It's not okay for one country to try to dictate to another its choices, its future, its policies, with whom it can associate. Principles like it's not okay for one country to say it has a sphere of influence over another to try to subjugate that country to its will. All of that is at stake here by Russia's aggression. But I have to tell you, and I know you know this because you're seeing this in different ways every day, what's also at stake, what gets lost sometimes as we're talking about these big principles, are the individual lives and futures that are at stake. The mothers and children we see fleeing across the border from Ukraine into, into Poland, into Moldova, into other neighboring states, some coming here to Lithuania. The husbands, fathers, brothers staying behind to fight. Those who are caught in the onslaught by Russia, shelled, shelled to death. We see the images on TV of family torn, families torn apart. Each and every one of these principles that we talk about, it has a real person behind it in one way or another. And what you're doing every single day here with our partner, Lithuania, is validating everything that we're doing to try to uphold those principles and so protect the futures of those men, women, and children whose lives are now at stake. Uh, I'm grateful to the team here in, in Vilnius for some extraordinary work during this extraordinary time. Uh, we've had an increased military presence and the support that you've given to our military personnel coming in, uh, the resources coming in as a result of our efforts to strengthen NATO's eastern flank, that's making a big difference. Um, there have been more than a few high-level visits. Uh, I know the Secretary of Defense was here. We've had CODELs. Uh, I'm sure there'll be others coming next. The only thing I want to tell you is that I know the one benefit of these visits is uh, you get a wheels up party. So I wish I could stick around for that, but in advance, have a happy wheels up party. I read, we consume the work that you're doing. Um, tremendous reporting cables from Minsk and Vilnius uh, on the migration in Belarus, on the economic coercion in Lithuania, and that's a whole other subject that uh, we could come to. So in each of these ways, big and small, you're making uh, a real difference. And one of the things that really touched me was learning about some of the uh, younger folks in our community here who collected products for Ukrainian refugees. Uh, some of you, I understand, skip recess <laughs> to do some, of that, uh, do some of that work. Packing things so that uh, some kids just like you uh, could know just a little bit of relief uh, in the turmoil they're experiencing. And then I just want to reiterate what Bob and Julie pointed to. Um, since the order of departure from, uh, from Minsk, uh, the two teams have been working so closely together. Um, the Belarus Affairs Unit um, has been doing remarkable work promoting democracy in Belarus, promoting democracy in Belarus there uh, from afar, and indeed it is uh, one mission uh, with two locations, set up in 2021, but doing remarkable work and keeping faith with our friends in Belarus. Finally, let me just say that there's tremendous resilience here in another way, too. And I see this in our missions around the world. Uh, we've all been working through COVID. I hope we're getting to, uh, to the end point. Uh, back home in Washington, we're, we're following Washington, D.C. Um, regulations. We just got to take off our masks at the State Department. So hopefully not too far behind. Uh, the uh, Maine state itself is coming back to life. 
cafeteria opening up, the sort of Starbucks uh, coming back, those of you who know it. So we're getting there, and you'll get there too. But here's what I know. I know that over the last couple of years, this has been incredibly challenging on a professional level, uh, but also on a personal level. Some of you have um, uh, been ill, some of you have lost friends and loved ones in one way or another, but you've all come together. You've shown incredible resilience, you've shown that you've had each other's backs, and that makes a huge, huge difference. Um, so I want to thank you for that, um, for sticking together, for sticking with the mission, for getting the job done. Finally, let me say to uh, those of you who are part of the locally employed staff, thank you, thank you, thank you. Every place we go, every embassy in the world, uh, you are the lifeblood of the mission. We can't do our work without you, without that partnership. And as Bob said, I think there are folks who have been here for 30 years working side by side. I don't know if any of them are actually here today, and I'm probably going to do a terrible injustice to their names. But just in case you're here, Yorga uh, Chesnaya. Uh, here, yes. Please. Yolanda Kuribaitai. Here. All right. Let's let's see. Veronica Grinchilai Tienyaya. Did I get that close? Are you here? Thank you.